Hello guys, I'm Rick with Techspin, and we're on to our third review of the three Sadie's tempered glass cases they have in their lineup. I'm pretty excited about this one, as it has a different front design, and I love seeing how components fit into case designs so that you can see if the build is right. The idea of large case windows has improved the industry's cases on a whole. In the last few years, we're getting fully painted interiors and versatile cases, which can accept a large amount of configurations. With all glass cases, what I look for most is quality construction, uh, good filtered airflow, and ease of assembly and accessibility. And so we've got the new RAW case by Sadie's, which they sent us for review. So let's take a look, yeah. These guys are constantly doing work in my building. Oh, so much work to be done here. But finally, get the case. Yeah. So this is the new raw tempered glass case and I'm already pretty excited as they seem to have made a very solid design effort here. The raw is sitting next to the Osiris, also by Sadies. And at first glance, an obvious difference is the three fans the raw comes with compared to the two in the Osiris. The raw is going for 2,990 NT or a hair over $100 US. And the Osiris we saw earlier is 2190 NT or 72 bucks. With a very competitive case market, the RAW needs to bring something special to the table. It does have very slick looks from the outset, but will that be enough? So we'll get into our review of the RAW TG case right after this. With two panels of glass on the front and the left side, what sets it apart from its brothers and makes it worth the asking price of $100? And here's the part I always look forward to, the peel. All right. So Sadie's decided for this model to do a three fan design on the front, and those three RGB fans do ship with the case pre-installed. The case has support for ATX, MATX, and ITX builds and there's space for two hard drives and two SSDs. Or four SSDs total using the sliding caddies hidden at the front of the power supply area. The RAW is 43 and a half centimeters deep by 20 and a half wide and 51 cm's tall. So technically this just enters into full tower size territory. And the RAW uses the same thumb screws as the Osiris to hold on the side panel whereas the obelisk needed larger ones to hold all the glass. With a great amount of room inside, Sadie's have already installed the standoffs for users for ATX builds, though if you have a smaller board, you'll need to move them. And as always, count and check all the standoffs are in the right place as you put on your motherboard. I do like the rubber grommets for the back panel, of which there are seven in total. Three Mandela fans come pre-installed in the front of the case, and they pull air in from the two long grilled sides of the front extension which has the glass firmly attached with adhesive to the top. The front can accept 120, 140, and 240 millimeter rads for your cooling needs, though you'll need to juggle the screw positioning if you want to keep the front aesthetic. Speaking of aesthetics, I'm not sure what Sadisa was going for here, but it would have been nice to include a cover for the five and a quarter bay remnant as they just left it open here, perhaps for a controller display, but as there's no access, I just found it a bit strange. You can always slap in an IC Dock 4X SSD holder to increase your storage in your rig. Getting back to the outside, I noticed the glass has been rounded all around the front, and considering it's what you'll likely see the most, I found it's a really nice touch and appreciate Sadie's attention to detail in this area. We were on fans, and while you'll probably find you won't need to move them from their pre installed locations, they are easily movable to the other six fan spots that cover the top, power supply cover, and behind the CPU. They also use the new controller that can handle five more fans for a total of eight, two RGB strips, as well as a connector to control the lighting effects manually, Molex for power, and a remote sensor, as well as the new feature of the controller, an RGB header for your motherboard's four pin, 12 volt pinout. And there's cutouts at the back of the riveted power supply cover just to make this easier to attach. The front of the cover has this nicely designed RA insignia in white. The power supply area is 21 centimeters deep, so enough for a good sized PESU and some room to stuff in extra wiring. The bottom of the area has a magnetic dust filter and that removes 
and attaches back with little effort. At the top of the case, we find a magnetic dust filter that's easy to clean, which covers 120, 140, 240, or 280 mil rads for installation here. And the front I.O. panel has power, LEDs, reset, two USB 2.0 and one USB 3.0, audio jacks, and the extra RGB button so you won't have to sacrifice your reset switch functionality. Long pressing the RGB button enables motherboard sync or you can press the button on the remote. And in the last case review, I showed that with MSI's Mystic Lite software. For the CPU area, you can attach coolers up to 170 mils, so most common big coolers can be used without issue. Behind the CPU, there's space to mount a 120 mil radiator or fan, take your pick. The case has space for long graphics cards, up to 37 centimeters total. This typical GTX 970 for reference is just 28 cm's long. Checking the hardware bag, we have the same selection as the obelisk. Motherboard and long PSU cover screws, ties, a speaker, three rubber audio jack plugs, three rubber USB plugs, the RGB remote, and a cleaning cloth for the glass. There are several cable tie points at the back in strategic areas to help cable management and installing the CPU A pin proved to be painless thanks to the positioning of the cutout here. Now the back panel is metal and there's two centimeters clearance to it from the motherboard tray, so a tight fit won't happen. Installing my test MSI B360 Gaming Arctic was easy and I had zero issues. Lit up, the front panel looks really nice. With the extra fan, the front feels more complete than the Osiris. And the bottom has a signature Sadie's Wolf logo. Overall, the construction and styling of the case speaks for itself. It's well put together with some thought into the design. Of course, there are a couple of small things that could be better, like the big gaping hole in the front panel, which is a little noticeable. Also, this case, like the others, doesn't have a front filter, so that could get fixed in the future. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Hey, I'm Shane. Hey Shane. So, yeah, what did you think about the case? Um, not bad. Pretty stylish. Uh, like the glass paneling in, in the front, doesn't go all the way to the bottom, so, you know, Good improvement. Yeah, some airflow. It's also easier to grab the case. Now, it's just venting along the... Yeah, um, I, I really like this design because it has a improvement whereas the air can go inside uh, from the side vent, so there's actually a lot more room for the air to go inside, so that's a, de a definite good improvement for this case. And also the back has some uh, design work, but it's also cut out, so that's more intake for air. Yeah, uh, what about the static mat? Oh, the, um, these are the magnetic dust filters, so they yeah. come right off and it's really easy to take them off and then put them back on again. You can clean them and put them back, back on. There's one on the bottom too, so it's not too bad. All right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that there's a lot of room underneath for airflow. <laughs> yeah, the, there's a good amount of clearance down here, and uh, I really like the, the fact that, uh, you know, the hard drive bay is cooled, the, the air coming in. It can be drawn in through the front of the case and then cool your hard drives down here, and then it goes up. And uh, overall, the, there's a lot of space to, to build inside this case, so it was pretty easy to build. Yeah, I was actually noticing that too on the motherboard tray and um, the spacing for the cutouts. Yeah. It was really, really nice for cable management. And on top of that, um, behind, there's actually a fair amount of room to move the cables around. And yeah, earlier in the video, I said there's like two centimeters uh, clearance, which is really good because usually manufacturers will give like one or one and a half, and uh, it can be challenging to put the side back on. but even with a whole bunch of cables for all the fans and all the uh, uh, c connectors, um, yeah, it was still pretty easy to put the back, back on. So. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, the, the way they laid the whole thing out is a pretty smart design. Yeah, lots of uh, points for cable management, and uh, yeah, I was, I was very impressed. Um, one thing with this build, because there's the controller can only do eight fans, so we have the three in the front here, we have three on the bottom, and one extra here is actually uh, seven right now, but I put two white, I have a scarab white fans uh, that you've seen in the clips, and they are actually residing up here, but um, 
Yeah, overall, very impressed. Nice, nice amount of room. And uh, the SSDs here can mount nicely on the front, so there we go. So my thoughts on the Sadie's Raw are that it's a great case for showing off your rig, and if you don't need the top and rear glass, you can save on the weight and the price. It's not missing any of the top features that Obelisk has, save for a little bit of space inside, and maybe a bit easier to find a home for. Really well put together, with great air intakes, this Sadie's Raw case earns a 9 on the meter. This will be a really great enclosure for your next build, and I know the current case trends are away from hard drives, but most consumers have a bunch of media and having options to place more than two hard drives would have been better for me, personally. With the inclusion of Sadie's new Mandala controller with integrated motherboard RGB headers and the ability to sync them, I'm liking the direction that they are on, and I'm hoping for a unit with 10 fan ports in the future. Anyways, with three pre-installed Mandala fans and dual TG panels, it's a decent deal for the $100 asking price. While most mid-towers can be difficult to work in, the inclusion of a couple of extra inches at the top makes the raw very easy to build inside, and cable management is great too, so this case is getting a Techspin Gold Award. A very solid effort, again. Front filtering is needed to bump this up to the next metal category, however, you may be able to retrofit the case with long, slim filter material since the front design allows for that. Let me know what you think about the Sadie's Raw in the comments section below, and what you'd like or want to see in UK's designs. If you're looking for a tempered glass case, I think this one strikes a great balance between cost, size, weight, and features, and it was very easy to work with. Thanks go to Sadie's for making this video possible. We'd like to hear your ideas for upcoming episodes, so feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we do respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.